Right now, the continued hot and humid weather is forcing the Madison School District to cancel summer programs this week. See if others are following suit. At a plan commission meeting tonight, the Village of Spring Green continues its conversation for a proposed dog breeding facility. Plus, the president holds a campaign rally tonight in North Carolina, continuing his attacks on four freshman Democratic Congresswomen of color. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. The Madison area is getting ready for weather we haven't seen in years. We're in the middle of an extended stretch of alert days and the warmest weather is still expected tomorrow and Friday. Let's go right to Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti, our first alert forecast. Gary. We're watching the, the threat for thunderstorms later tonight. If the storms hold off or hold off until sometime early tomorrow morning, that could lessen the heat tomorrow afternoon because it would give us some cloud cover. But right now, there's really nothing developing out to the west of us. And the Storm Prediction Center has cut back on the severe weather outlook, keeping the severe weather threat mainly to our north and west tonight. Now, tomorrow, there's a risk of severe thunderstorms, especially through central Wisconsin, where uh, storms in the morning could flare up into the afternoon. And then there's also a marginal risk on Friday. But it's possible that both of those time periods could stay mainly rain-free around southern Wisconsin. Not only won't we break the heat, but we'll also miss out on the severe weather threat. If storms develop, they could bring heavy rain. So a flash flood watch is in effect for areas west of a Platteville to Lone Rock to Camp Douglas line through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Heat advisories, though, are in effect for most of southern Wisconsin from tomorrow afternoon through Friday evening. Southwestern Wisconsin, Crawford, and Grant counties under excessive heat warnings. High temperatures today, upper 80s, close to 90 degrees. Madison topped out at 89. We're still at 80. Most areas have dropped into the 70s. But with dew point temperatures in the mid-60s, to the lower 70s. It still feels like it's 84 degrees at 10 o'clock here in Madison. By tomorrow morning, look for a round of showers and thunderstorms early in the morning. Then the sun comes out and our temperatures soar. Look for a high of 94 tomorrow with the heat index between 102 and 107. Later on, I'll tell you what our chances are to break the heat further on down the line. These hot temperatures are forcing Madison schools to take a break from summer programs. But other organizations are finding other ways to stay in session and keep kids cool. Amy Reed joins us to show us how they're doing that, Amy. Okay, I officially take back every complaint that I had about the cold weather this winter, but just like extreme cold for schools, kids programs and parents to find ways to stay warm, photojournalist Lance Height and I learned about what they're doing now as the weather's flipped. <laughs> Aldo Leopold Nature Center has clever ways to cool down. We do like relay races. After all, a nature center can't just skip the outdoors. We've noticed a little bit more of uh, the red faces, um, just being tired and hot from being outside. So they have the sprinkler. They also have sponges full of water and the trusty spray bottle. Great for kids. I'll spray myself every now and then. And adults. They ask kids and parents to come prepared for heat, meaning sunscreen, hats, and water bottles. Great advice for the park, too. Definitely have to keep them busy out here. Nakila and her son, Camarion, come to Elver Park <laughs> to cool off on the splash pad or get a breeze from the swings. He usually doesn't mind it. You know, kids don't really care, but sometimes he'll say it's hot or like, hot, hot, hot. So. <laughs> Say it's hot, mommy. The rest of the week, it might get worse. Madison Metropolitan School District canceled summer school and programs Friday in anticipation. But Thursday, they'll just have to find ways to keep cool. Go for it, Gavin. Go Though it's hard to beat this. We ah! just talk about how we can have fun outside of nature, no matter what the weather is, as long as you're being safe and learning how to, how to handle it. If your child is enrolled in a summer program or summer school with MMSD, they said they won't penalize you for keeping them home tomorrow. If you have any questions, they said to contact your student's summer school site. And during this hot weather, make sure to check on elderly neighbors as well, friends or family members. Local organizations have been doing welfare checks for patients to make sure they're okay. They say some call for help saying they don't know how to use their air conditioning. So please be sure to check on anyone you know who may need a little bit of assistance. Prosecutors have charged a man suspected of killing a three-year-old girl in what Milwaukee police say was an act of road rage. Police say 39-year-old Antonio Bratcher is accused of firing a gun from his SUV into another vehicle Saturday morning after a near collision. The other vehicle had four young children inside. Brooklyn Harris was killed by the gunfire. Bratcher is charged with first-degree reckless homicide and five counts of recklessly endangering safety. 
The man accused of killing an off-duty Racine police officer will go to trial. Telquavis Ward appeared in court today with more than a dozen Racine police officers on hand. Prosecutors say Ward fired at Officer John Hetland when he tried to stop him from robbing Teaser's bar the night of June 17th. Hetland was not in a police uniform at the time. If convicted, Ward will get a life sentence. He'll be back in court on August 7th. Police are happy to say a victim is safe and a man they consider dangerous is off the streets of Beloit tonight. This comes after a 10-hour standoff that started just after midnight. 32-year-old Alexander Duke was wanted on three felony charges in Beloit and Illinois for kidnapping, sexual assault, and recklessly endangering safety. This guy has really terrorized Rockford and Beloit. Both departments have been looking for him feverishly for several months, and he's shown his propensity for the use of firearms and really a lack of... Uh, um, sense of safety for others. So uh, I think it was definitely a good person to get into custody and get them out of here. The apartment complex on Burton Street was evacuated as officers negotiated with Duke. He eventually surrendered around 1045 this morning, about 10 hours after the standoff started. Police say they don't believe this was a hostage situation at this time, but they're interviewing the victim to see if any potential crimes were committed today. Another standoff today. This one was in rural Sauk County in the town of Delona. It lasted two hours this afternoon. Deputies say 19-year-old Andrew Kuzik of Wisconsin Dells was breaking things inside a home on Oak Leaf Lane and fired off around. When officers arrived, the man refused to come out, but after two hours of negotiations, he eventually surrendered without incident. A three-year-old girl is dead after a television set apparently fell on her. This happened in Oshkosh. A police department news release says officers responded last night to this report of a TV falling on a child. Officers were told the child wasn't breathing, didn't have a pulse. The girl was transported to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. The news release says police are continuing to investigate but offers no further details. Prosecutors have dropped the criminal groping case against actor Kevin Spacey. He was accused of groping a then 18-year-old at a bar on Nantucket three years ago. The accuser said Spacey allegedly bought him several alcoholic drinks and then groped him. The move comes a week after a man who accused him of assault pleaded the fifth on the witness stand. Residents of Spring Green are continuing to voice their opinions about a proposed breeding facility in the village. A couple wants to breed dogs for medical purposes. Tonight's planned commission meeting discussed a conditional use permit for it. It was a packed house. Most of the testimony was against the facility. The owners of the property were also in attendance. Last week, Spring Green rescinded its recommendation of approval for the facility. President Trump fired up the crowd at a campaign rally in North Carolina and continued his attacks on four freshman Democratic Congresswomen in spite of a House resolution condemning his remarks. Natalie Brand has more details from Capitol Hill. Representative Ilhan Omar. President Trump named the four freshman Congresswomen one by one, attacking each for her comments and ideas and drawing chants from the crowd. The president kept up his attacks after his tweets telling the four congresswomen to go back and help fix the totally broken and crime-infested places from which they came. Three were born in the U.S., one is a naturalized U.S. citizen. And now the president is framing the progressive congresswomen as representing all Democrats. Their comments are helping to fuel the rise of a dangerous, militant hard left. House Democrats passed a resolution Tuesday condemning President Trump's tweets about the Congresswomen, but an effort to move forward with impeaching the president failed on Wednesday, however showed a split between Democrats. Many of those people that voted for us were Democrats, and I want to thank them. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has repeatedly said she's not ready to move forward with impeachment proceedings. It's one of several areas where she and the four freshman Congresswomen known as the squad disagree. I'm apologetic about it. I'm definitely, definitely going to push forward and saying we have to impeach him. The topic is not likely to go away. Special counsel Robert Mueller is set to testify next week. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And Mueller is scheduled to go before the House Judiciary and Intelligence Committees next Wednesday. And tonight, House of Representatives also voted to hold Attorney General William Barr and Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross in criminal contempt of Congress. The resolution was approved by a vote of 230 to 198 with four Democrats voting no, 
The measure stems from Barr and Ross's failure to comply with subpoenas for information about adding a citizenship question to the 2020 census. The Trump administration preparing to send hundreds of U.S. troops to Saudi Arabia. Two defense officials say 500 troops are expected to go to the Prince Sultan Air Base located in a desert area east of the Saudi capital of Riyadh. Congress has not been formally notified of this deployment. A small number of troops and support personnel are already at that base, but the U.S. has wanted to place more troops there for some time because of concerns about Iran. In June, the Trump administration said it would be sending 1,000 additional troops to the Middle East, but did not specify where. Supporters hope Governor Evers is easing the lives of the deaf and hard of hearing with a bill signing today. Evers signed Assembly Bill 250 in Greenfield. It changes the rules for interpreter licensing. It'll also require state health department approval for exam licenses and allows interpreters to receive new trainings in places like the ER, courtrooms, and mental health facilities. It's been a busy week for former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. On Monday, he announced he had accepted a full-time position starting in 2021 with the Young America's Foundation. And today, President Trump announced he was appointing Walker to the Board of Trustees of one of the world's most highly regarded think tanks. Walker is set to join the board of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in the Smithsonian Institute. It's a six-year appointment. Still to come tonight, a $1.5 million road construction project is finally done after being delayed because of weather. And then we hear from the publisher of a Madison LGBT magazine who says it continues to be the target of vandalism. news for anyone who travels through Middleton. The $1.5 million University Avenue construction project is now officially done. The work began in late April, spanning from Cayuga Court to Park Street in Middleton. The project included water and sewer repairs, new traffic signals, intersection improvements, new curbs, and repaving. Crews were intending to be done by the 4th of July, but it was pushed back due to the weather. 
The publisher of Medicine's LGBT magazine says the boxes where you pick up his publication are targets of escalating vandalism. Our Lives magazine publisher Patrick Faribault says he's now had to clean up seven of the boxes in just the last two weeks. Sometimes people kick the boxes over or steal them. He routinely finds anti-gay stickers and graffiti on those boxes. He's also found religious pamphlets and LGBTQ slurs written on the magazine's inside. So whoever is doing it views us as lesser or views us as I think often not even having a right to exist. Now you may recall we reported that a rock was thrown through the office at Our Lives magazine in May of last year. The office was actually vandalized three times, so for safety reasons, the staff members now work from home. Black Lives Matter protesters marched in New York today on the fifth anniversary of Eric Garner's death. Black Lives they Matter here! Black Lives they Matter here! The 43-year-old died after a police officer allegedly placed him in a chokehold. His death was ruled a homicide by New York's medical examiner who said the incident triggered a fatal asthma attack. Yesterday, the Federal Department of Justice decided against charging officer Daniel Pantaleo. He could still lose his job if he's found to have put Garner in a chokehold. A powerful storm pounding the New York City area tonight as a dangerous heat wave descends on the Northeast. National Weather Service warned of dangerous conditions, including flash flood watches, severe thunderstorms, and excessive heat as the system picks up remnants from Hurricane Barry. And Gary Knoll, you joining us now, we'll look at the heat wave we have to deal with as well, Gary. Yeah, our heat wave is pretty much on the way. The big question tonight is whether or not thunderstorms develop late tonight and linger long enough into tomorrow morning to maybe lessen the heat tomorrow afternoon if the clouds hold on long enough. But right now, uh, things pretty quiet out there. On Doppler track, you can see the atmosphere has expanded so much that even these thunderstorms that we're trying to develop over southern Minnesota and northern Iowa earlier this evening have just fallen apart. So right now, the nearest thunderstorms are way up in the Dakotas or north of Minnesota, and there's really nothing else, at least imminently, that will develop. Now, we may see some storms develop to our north and west tonight. Storm Prediction Center says they would move into the Twin Cities area with the highest severe weather threat there, but there's a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms north and west of the Dells. Notice this has been scaled back quite a bit for tonight because the severe weather threat threat is probably going to be a little bit less. By the time the storms reach us, it's more likely to be tomorrow morning, late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Then, we're, depending on where uh, the air gets cooled, and collides with air that hasn't been cooled from thunderstorms, we may see more storms develop, most likely in central Wisconsin. That's where the higher severe weather threat is for tomorrow. A marginal risk in the southern Wisconsin because any storms that do develop could bring heavy rain and strong winds. But again, that's not for sure. The better chances are probably going to be farther to the north because if the atmosphere just gets too hot, it expands and you can't get those thunderstorm air currents going, just like we're seeing tonight. And there's a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms on Friday. Pretty much the same setup. We're expecting high temperatures in the middle 90s it might just be too warm to get thunderstorms to develop. Maybe later Friday night would be a better chance for storms to develop. So later tonight and tomorrow morning, probably looking at about a half inch of rain over southern Wisconsin. Some areas could pick up a little bit more than that. And then more showers and thunderstorms late Saturday into Sunday will bring perhaps another inch of rain. But more importantly, it will break the heat at that point. The weather conditions should dry out for next week. Flash flood watch remains in effect until 7 a.m. for the western part of our viewing area, west of a Platteville to Richland Center to uh, Wisconsin Del or uh, uh, Camp Douglas line. We have alert days in the forecast, still overnight for the possibility for thunderstorms with heavy rain toward morning, and then a very hot and humid day for tomorrow and Friday with high temperatures between 94 and 96. Afternoon heat index readings perhaps close to 110, and even on Saturday, highs in the lower 90s before storms develop late in the afternoon. Right now, the live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison, pretty quiet out there, but it is sultry. As we look at the almanac for today, the high hit 89. The only reason we didn't hit 90 was because we had some cloud cover from storms that were well out to the west of us. Low temperature last night was at 69, but we're still at 80 degrees at 10 o'clock with a dew point temperature of 71. It feels like it's 84 degrees. The humidity at 74%. Upper level winds bulging to the north. This is the heat that's building. So these storms, as they push into the hot and humid air, they just kind of fall apart. And that's what happened to the storms that moved through Iowa just left the cloud cover that kept us from hitting 90 degrees today. Tomorrow that might not be the case because as this warm front lifts to the north and east, the thunderstorm chances go down and the temperatures go up. We'll have to see if the cold front to the north and west can trigger storms. That's where the difference is in temperatures between 70s in northern Minnesota and, and temperatures that were in the middle 80s into the Twin Cities area. But look at where the heat is. Temperatures, these are actual high temperatures today in the triple digits through much of Kansas and still 92 degrees at Hill City, Kansas at 10 o'clock at night. We're sitting at a sultry 80 degrees. So 
again, flash flood watch in effect for areas west of a Platteville to Lone Rock to Camp Douglas line, and then a heat advisory from much of the viewing area for uh, tomorrow afternoon into Friday night, and an excessive heat warning for Crawford and Grand counties where heat indices could hit 110 degrees. 74 overnight, again, thunderstorms developing late tonight into tomorrow morning, and then once those storms end, it turns hot and humid with a high of 94 and the heat index from 102 to 107. On future track, we'll have to see if these storms can develop overnight. The computer models think they will, but then they should move out rapidly and then the skies clear out and notice the temperatures climbing into the mid 90s. Tomorrow night, just an outside chance of a shower or thunderstorm, mainly north of Madison, low temperatures in the upper 70s, and then Friday, pretty much the same story. Highs again in the middle 90s. Rainfall amounts where it occurs could be heavy, one to two inches. Some areas may miss out on the rain altogether. But more importantly, once we get those storms out of here on Sunday, notice the humidity levels drop and look at the, te the uh, temperature forecast from Monday through Friday between about 80 and 85 with low humidity, nighttime low temperatures dropping back to around 60. That's the kind of summer weather we mm -hmm. like to see. I was going to say, if we can just copy and paste, but I know it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it was. I'd do it any, any time. All, right, All Gary, year. Yeah. Right. We do that. Thank Gary. you. You're welcome. All right, straight ahead, some local All-Stars get ready for their last football game in a high school uniform. We'll have that story and more. Sports is on deck. Wisconsin.
Wisconsin Football Coaches Association All-Star Games kick off Saturday in Oshkosh. Now, there's an eight-player game, a small school game, and a large school game that'll fill the day at Titan Stadium at UW Oshkosh. North versus South, the South rosters practice in the heat at UW Whitewater today. Now, coordinating a high school football All-Star roster in a week is no joke, but the coaches told us everyone's having a blast. It's difficult getting it going in your own town, but to have people coming from, you know, potentially 46 different places and, and to do it all within a five, you know, six day period, it's a, it's a challenge, but boy, it's pretty crazy how these guys can do it like that. The coaches are doing a phenomenal job getting us on the same page. And I mean, the first couple of practices were a little brutal, but you know, we're getting a lot better and we're starting to click. Forward Madison FC has been a success in the first year of existence. They're on the outside looking in for a playoff spot, but you wouldn't know that if you went to Bree Stevens Field, especially last night when they drew 4,800 plus in a win over Mexican club team Leones Negros. Now starting a soccer team in a place with weather issues in the spring and plenty going on in the summer is a gamble, but it's paid off so far. You know, feel blessed to, to represent this city and just, you know, the city has accepted the players and this team. Um, tremendously and so we want to be able to repay them back and, 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 and you know we're still fighting we're still you know getting you know fighting for a playoff spot um, so we can show our fans um, you know how much they mean to us. I think we've set the bar for USL League One. Uh, it's been an exciting year obviously we want to still finish strong with it but uh, this has been uh, you know I don't think anybody dreamed that it would be this great. Brewers rookie second baseman Keston here has been on fire, entering Wednesday's series finale with the Braves. He was hitting 565 over his last six games. Now you have to wait a second for the hero stuff. Sometimes it's okay to have the dessert first. Christian Yelich, indeed. 34th homer of the year to left center, a no doubter. Puts the crew up 3 0 in the sixth, same inning. Here's the hero. Smokes one to center. An RBI double scores Ryan Braun. He was two for four in the game. Brewers a four nothing. Five two in the ninth. Josh Donaldson going to make things interesting against Josh Hader. Two out, two run single makes it five four. But Hader closes the door. Brewers take the series five four. The final. Especially you know, with the start of the second half after the All Star break, uh, I kind of want to really make a statement for myself, um, just to prove to myself that um, you know you know what you're doing and. Uh, you know, kind of not press too much or anything like that. Kind of do what you do. Cubs trying to take two of three from the Reds. Jason Hayward. A little two strike production into the right field corner. Two run double in the seventh. Cubs win 5 2. They lead the Brewers by two in the NL Central. Former Mallard Pete Alonso did it again. It is 31st homer for the Mets. This one 474 feet. He has 31 homers, 71 runs batted in, leads all rookies. What was that thing about the home run derby scoring up your swing? That's a Northwoods League MVP right there. We're back after this.
Things look like they're pretty quiet overnight, so we'll have to see if storms do develop. If we get it, clouds to hold long enough tomorrow, that might cool temperatures down a bit. But if not, look for highs in the mid-90s. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Now.